watching Good Morning Britain on Christmas Eve. Should we have a look at some of today's front pages? Well, the Telegraph's headline is, Our path this year has been bumpy. Talking about the Queen's speech, the paper is reporting on that. And the monarch also states that small steps taken in faith and hope can overcome long-held <coughs> differences. It's a nice thought, that yeah, one, isn't it? absolutely. Uh, the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi makes the front of today's Guardian. It says that Saudi Arabia has been accused of a mockery of justice by shielding the alleged masterminds behind the killing after eight men were convicted of the 2018 crime. The Sun's headline today, She Tried to Kill Me, refers to a claim made in court yesterday against the television presenter Caroline Flack. Miss Flack denies assault of her boyfriend by beating. Joining us now is journalist and documentary maker Jenny Kleeman and political commentator and journalist Tom Harwood. Tom and Jenny, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Are we in the Christmas spirit? Are we, are we there? Are we... Pretty much, yeah, I think yeah, so. Just about Good. Yeah. Are, 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 Good. We in, are we in the Boris mood, which his Christmas message seems to be far more upbeat and uh, looking ahead to the year ahead, or, or he's sort of reflective and a bit more pensive like Corbyn? Oh, I, should, I, should, I should hope Boris. I should hope <laughs> that moving into 2020, we're going to have a much more fun year than we've had in 2019. Yeah. Should we have a little look, actually, at yeah. a little bit of what mm. uh, Boris has to say? Hi folks, Boris Johnson here, taking a moment to wish you all a Merry Little Christmas. On behalf of the whole country, I want to say a huge thank you to our amazing NHS staff, many of whom will be working throughout the holidays to take care of us. Thank you also to our police, to all those public servants working tirelessly this Christmas. I mean, that's a good thought, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, all those working very, very hard. Yes, and we have to be very grateful to all of them. But also the NHS, we love the NHS. That's why it was such a big deal in the election. It's the one thing we're all agreed on nowadays in these divided times is what a good thing the NHS is. So, yes, I'm very grateful they're all still working, even today and tomorrow. But well, well, what do we think of this optimism? I mean, he's, he's taking a tone in this message. Has he, has he got this right? I mean, he, he feels very confident, I have to say, since he's won, and so he should be, since he's won the election. We hear him speak now. He, he seems like a bit of the old Boris is coming back now, a bit, a bit more relaxed. Absolutely, that? and that's his brand, to bring people together through joy, happiness, sunshine, that whole... Um, that whole effervescence that he gives off, right? And, mm. and that's in, in the same spirit as, I think, Ronald Reagan brought in in the 1980s to the United States. In a more modern way, we're seeing that now. And it's quite interesting how he delivers that message in such an upbeat, folksy tone. He says, hi, folks. He says, don't argue with the ignores. He says all mm. those kind of things that I think people can kind of unite around. And it's not so political and it's not so one-sided. It's trying to bring a divided country together. Mm. And what do we think about this idea of don't argue with the ignores? I mean, we're talking about this later, actually. Well, you know, Christmas dinner tomorrow, should politics be off the table? He's suggesting, listen, don't probably leave it aside. What do, what do you think, Jenny? Will you I be talking politics? politics uh, no, I won't be talking <laughs> politics. But I think it has to be off the table, really, because this is the thing, no matter where you stand on Brexit, and I'm still very sad that we're leaving the European Union, but I've had to accept the fact that we are, because mm. the, the, the majority was so great. So there is a sense, and I think that's why Boris Johnson's so upbeat, is because he's relieved. There's a sense that, you know, this particular chapter, like this decade, might be over now. Mm. He's due to spend Christmas at number 10, we understand, rather than the country residence checkers, mm. uh, with Carrie, with Carrie Simmons, his girlfriend. Um, what do you imagine Christmas Day for Boris is like? Well, what, ex... what is involved genuinely in a Prime Minister? Do they have official things to do or is it purely fun? I'm excited to learn what he's going to get Carrie for Christmas, because, of course, during the election campaign, he said for Christmas he was going to get Brexit done. <laughs> but now, now we're beyond that sort of um, political soundbite messaging. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see um, what sort of actual gifts are being given. Mm. Surely they'll be walking that dog of theirs somewhere, that dog that makes... Do you think so, making a public appearance? He'll be making Dylan. sure that Dylan. He's, he's turkey's oven ready, I would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he'll be doing. I have visions of love, actually, him dancing down the staircase. Yes. So, do you know that lovely scene yeah. with Hugh Grant where he dances down the staircase? Apparently, the Civil Service Party just last week, the um, people who work in Number 10 made a parody of that that was shown to the Prime Minister. Um, and, and much mirth was had. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have a look Oh, yeah, this at, is it. Uh, this is Hugh oh, Grant. Oh, you can is. just yeah. imagine, Boris, doing this, can't you, with oh, Harry please, no, I'd tucked away not. stuff like getting <laughs> dirty on. Oh, no. Not quite sure oh, no. Look I can. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, let's take a look at Jeremy Corbyn, then. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn has given, given us his message as well. Let's have a little listen to Jeremy Corbyn. This has been a difficult year for many of us. We didn't succeed in delivering the change that so many people desperately need. But Christmas is a chance to listen, reflect 
And remember all the things that bind us together. Our compassion, our determination to tackle injustice, and our hope for a better world. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, oh, it's, don't far, say, uh, it's far yeah. too earnest. I mean, what is he doing? I mean, it's, it's a bit Jack and Nori. It's, I don't know what, it it, just the tone. The, to the thing about Jeremy Corbyn is he, he's misjudged things and he's got things wrong. And this will be his last Christmas message. <laughs> We hope, I think, because he, he, he says he's going to go, but we don't know when. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I think, I think it, he's carrying on in the vein that lost him the election, I think. Mm. And I mean, he repeats his, make mm. this country uh, a, a country that cares for many and not the few. I mean, that, that was slogan his actual didn't slogan. Him. It didn't mm. work for him. And it's a real sense that he reuses at this moment it's a real sense that he hasn't moved on, yeah. isn't it? No, and I think the Labour Party needs to show that they're, that they're listening. We really need a proper opposition to Boris Johnson. Everybody, I think, even, even Conservative supporters agree that it's a good thing to have it a decent feel, It opposition. feels when you watch that, and I know, I, you know, he has to give a message of some kind, but it just feels like it's still about Jeremy Corbyn rather than about the Labour Party, which it, now it has to be. And I think, you know, that's Absolutely. the thing that the party has got to realise, that you've got to move on. What is the future of the party? No one really cares about Jeremy Corbyn right now. Oh, right, and it seems so much more political than Boris Johnson's message. Mm. What we hear is slogans and sound mm. bites and, and politics, and I don't think that's what Christmas is really about. Mm. On Boris's message, it's much more sort of warm and, and apolitical. Mm. And I think that's what this time of year is all about. I mean, it, you know, we probably should say we, the content of what he was saying about the NHS and all that, we, we would all agree with, aren't we? Which is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, lots of people would agree mm. with, I'm mm. sure. But it's tough for him, though, because he's just lost an election mm. very badly at record levels. Mm. Uh, everybody was saying he was a terrible leader, or lots of people wow. are. And so how do you deliver a message in that point? You nice, know, to well, hard for him. nice to see him in a sort of pale blue suit, though. As well. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, slightly different, so I thought. Yeah, it's I don't know, I think a bit of humility would, would, would go a long way. Ed Miliband, you know, resigned as leader with a, with a much less bad defeat back in the day. I think there is this sense that Labour really does need to change very quickly if it's going to have any chance of, of, of doing well in the next election, and that doesn't seem to be happening yet, and with, with this message, not at all. So, Nicola Sturgeon for Scottish Nationalist Party has also given a message. Hers is one of hope. She's asking people to be good neighbours and spread some Christmas cheer. This Christmas, let's be especially thankful for those who are working on our behalf. If we're able to, let's also do our own bit to spread some Christmas cheer, either by volunteering or simply by being a good neighbour or friend. And wherever you are, whether you are in Scotland or further afield, whether you are with friends and family, or on your own, I hope you have the best possible time over this festive period. I wish you, all of you, a very Merry Christmas and a happy 2020. I mean, she looks so friendly and jolly there. Do you think she's hoping Boris Johnson's going to be a good neighbour and give her the chance to have a, another referendum? <laughs> I think she's not, because I think she's quite enjoying him saying no, because it bolsters her, her case. Uh... And in Scotland at the moment, there's only, like, 40% of people who, who want independence. But the more that, that she's made to look like, or Scotland is made to look like they're under the thumb of, of Westminster and Boris Johnson, the more likely that there's going to be more support for independence. I think. But it's interesting looking at the background of that clip. There's a Scottish saltire, there's a flag. And the other two clips, Jeremy Corbyn and Boris Johnson, there was no sort of flag, no sort of insignia there. So it, it is almost like she's only speaking to half of Scotland, the 45% who voted for the SNP uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that is an interesting thing to note, mm. that perhaps she's not trying to be that unifying figure that mm. we're seeing elsewhere. Mm. Mm. Now, of course, I guess all of these um, little moments and messages will be overshadowed by the Queen's speech, mm. um, which is a big date in the diary for, for millions of people on Christmas Day. And um, she said, hasn't she, that, that she's acknowledged it's going to be a bumpy year. Well, she said it has, it has been, been a bumpy, a bumpy, year, a bumpy sorry. year. And yeah. that's as, as far as the Queen goes to making quite an extreme comment, mm. I think. And, and referring, obviously, to, to Prince Andrew there and, yeah. uh, and various other, you know, bits of bad press the royal family has got and also uh, tensions within the country. But uh, I think she also is hoping to turn a page. They were quite uh, decisive with their dealing, of, dealing with Prince Andrew. So uh, she's hoping that this bumpy year um, ends here. And also, uh, Prince Philip, I mean, he had that dramatic car crash and is now, we understand, still in hospital. Mm. So there's, that's a tough one as well, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, bumps all round. And just looking at that sort of political situation that we've experienced in the last 12 months, it's extraordinary the kind of tumult that the country's gone through. And it's right yeah. that the Queen picks up on that. It's been an extraordinary period where 
I mean, I think if we look back on it in a few years' time, we're going to think, what were we thinking in terms of wrangling over mm. something that should have been decided three years ago? And we took I three really years hope that to is what we're thinking. it and undo and whatever. I, I think really finally, so finally there'll be I'm some, not so sure. some rest, and 2020 <laughs> will hopefully be a very, very different year. So when, do you, think when do you think we're going to feel like that? When do you think it's all going to be... Switched? Tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I really... Uh, just, uh, just very quickly, tomorrow, will you be watching the Queen's speech... Or will you turn over and watch John Burko's alternative <laughs> Christmas message? It's a very strange oh. choice, isn't it, John, John Burko? But well, he's out of are known for that, aren't they? That's what they do. Yes. Kind of surprise, it's yes. a surprising name. What do you think? I think they could have chosen something. I mean, obviously, he's meant to be giving a speech where he's talking about unity and people being getting on with each other, which is very strange, given that there were all these bullying accusations mm. against him and that he was renowned for making personal attacks in the, in the House of Commons. I think it's a, it's a pretty strange choice. I've just been told we've actually got a little bit of it, Ooh. actually. Uh, can, we, can we hear some of it? Let's take inspiration from young people. They are the future. Let's try to re-establish a civility of discourse. It would be good for Parliament, for democracy, and for our own mental health, an issue which is finally getting the attention it needs. So this Christmas, I urge that political difference, personal courtesy, should become our guiding lights in 2020 in the Commons, in our workplaces, and in our homes. There's a lot of puffing and blowing from you two during now. What are your Just feelings? Very, very strange it's to hear it from him. Nauseating. <laughs> from, <laughs> from someone who has been behind most of the division in Parliament, the most partisan speaker in decades, this guy who has been criticised for grandstanding, for making himself, putting himself in the spotlight in a way that a speaker really shouldn't, and suddenly he's continuing that in his post-speaker career. I think it's extraordinary that he decided to do that. What a lapse in judgement. Well, if he's entitled to opinion, he's entitled to it now, isn't he? I yeah, and I, I think it's no surprise that he'd want to do that, because he quite likes the limelight, and, mm. and, and it's continuing for him. Mm. I can and, well, actually, we say it's continuing. Of course, the New Year's honours list is mm. nearly upon us, and traditionally, for retiring speakers mm. do get honours, don't they? Mm. Other people that people are wondering about is, do you think, Theresa May and David Cameron? Oh, please, Lord, no. Really? <laughs> oh, I what about I their think... service? To the country. She tried and she, she tried and she mayor. failed. She was woefully ill-equipped to lead the country. She was a complete disaster. You feel sorry for her. She had a, a sense of duty that nobody can deny, but she was not able to do the job and she hung around too long, I think. I was in, an incredibly harsh critic of Theresa May while she was Prime Minister, but I think we need to recognise that compared to all other Prime Ministers who sort of <laughs> run away as soon as they've left, she is sticking around. She, she stood against the So you would say yes to Theresa May, but not to David Cameron, perhaps would you? At, perhaps at this moment we need to recognise that Theresa May is actually putting in the graft, is being a bloody good backbencher, whereas some other former Prime Ministers, in fact almost every former Prime Minister in the last 20 years, has run away as soon as they've finished the job. I think mm -hmm. that's something that should be recognised in mm -hmm. Theresa May. And Mary Berry is uh, a three to one, She's Olivia Coleman two to one. She's, She's already has. Piers Morgan is eighteen to one. What do you wow. think about him? Uh, uh, I couldn't possibly comment. If we're talking that. about uniting Probably the best. country, it might not be. <laughs> 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 We'd all have a good debate about Thank it. Thank you to anyone these days. Who's on there, so. <laughs> Thanks so much, Thank both you. of you. you. Uh, happy Christmas. You happy too. Christmas.